The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about you, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. And it is a wonderful Wednesday edition of Mick Shots as we have officially begun Cardinals Week here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones along with Mickey Spagnola, Everson Walls in transit right now after a canceled flight this morning. So Shocking, unable. right? <laughs> not that he's in transit, but the canceled flight portion of that oh. is not shocking. Uh, and so uh, no Everson uh, today. He will be be back tomorrow uh, but the football team is on the football field and they the just Dallas football team is on the football field and they just finished practice too mm-hmm. by the way all right and I did not notice any pads today uh, no pads uh, it was another light practice uh, McCarthy said that they would put on the helmets and shells tomorrow for their uh, more extensive practice, but he's still trying to sort of uh, restore energy or preserve energy uh, this late in the season and not try to wear his team out in practices. Uh, so they've been going light like this um, for the last couple of weeks and uh, continuing virtual meetings. Well, they got plenty of exercise on Sunday night when yes. you score 56 points. Yeah, That's but it. they only had to play three quarters, <laughs> too, true. by That's the way. True. That's true. Uh, so they preserved more energy uh, in that game, too. So, um, yeah, and uh, I think they got some uh, good. So here's what I got here. Um, we have a pool report because of the COVID protocols. Uh, Are you the pool reporter? Uh, Dave Hellman and Nick Eatman, I think, combined to do it. So how do we know, you and me, know that they weren't in pads today without having seen the pool report? Because the pool report says practice was outdoors, <laughs> also th- overcast, <laughs> with no shells or helmets, jerseys and caps, similar to last Wednesday's practice. Okay, and I'll pull back the curtain a little bit. Our SWBC podcast studio happens to be about 20 (laughs) feet from the practice field. Now, we are not allowed to watch practice or go out to the practice field. But but the windows are there. The windows are there. (laughs) Yes, we do see, and I purposely do not stop and watch practice. I'll say that, but I can't help but see that they didn't have pads on today. Yes, and uh, (laughs) and as I said, it's a Pool report. So hopefully nobody, because I heard somebody say, "Well, Kelvin Watkins reported." Well, no, he read the pool report, there so he didn't have anything anybody else didn't have. So in order on the practice today, uh, Tony Pollard spent the first 15 minutes of practice off to the side on the cords uh, with trainer Britt Brown, uh, and that's what he's been doing since he suffered the foot injury. Did it all last week for the first portion of practice and then went into practice. And as we saw in the game, he seems to be handling the plantar fasciata just fine. Also, Tyron Smith uh, was participating in individual drills, both uh, McCarthy, Jerry Jones, uh, Stephen Jones say they're very optimistic that he'll be ready to go uh, in this game. And do you realize... If indeed he starts, which I think they're planning on it, it'll be the first time those five guys have all started in the same game. Interesting. And I went back. I I doubted that when I first heard it. And so if you think about it, um, Lael Collins, uh, Zach Martin missed the first game, right? I thought the New Orleans game they were there. Uh, Let me check. I'm checking. I'm checking. I'm checking. I don't think so because they hadn't made the change at the guard position yet I don't think. oh yeah because it, yeah those five meaning Connor Williams in for Connor McGovern right there you go right. that's right and, and now Connor Williams was available that was one game they had all of their guys available right and I think maybe Connor Williams in that game played a little fullback uh, I mean Connor yeah Connor Williams Connor Will- played a little fullback I think and then they went back to Actually what doing he got now. he only played one play on offense in the New Orleans game 
Well, in that game, Terrence Steele had COVID that game, and so it was the following week at Washington is where they had everybody. Everybody. And that was Connor Williams had 13 snaps as a fullback in that game as Connor McGovern was the starter at left guard. Right. So it looks good for those guys. Also good news on the COVID front. Uh, Malik Hooker and Tristan Hill were both activated from reserve COVID. Uh, were in practicing in the portion uh, open that's regularly open to the media. Also, uh, Jaquan Hardy and Brandon Smith uh, were also uh, participating after being restored, 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 <laughs> restored to the practice squad. So they are off. Uh, the COVID-19 list. Noah Brown, remember him? The wide receiver out with a groin. He was practicing too, so uh, they have moved him off of, uh, well, he was on IR. Now he's on IR designated to return. So that opens a 20-day window, 21-day window, along with Jay, uh, with uh, Vasher and Josh Ball, who already had been activated. And because of Bernard uh, Francis Bernard's uh, injury, I believe it was a groin injury, uh, they've added Devontae Bond uh, to the practice squad. So they needed another linebacker to kind of help him out uh, through practice. On the designated to return rules, because uh, we, we talked about it last week on Ball, and who's the other one that they activated? Uh, uh, or they? Um, well, it was uh, Vasher. Vasher and, and – um, Where was the other guy? Uh, it was Josh Ball. Josh, Josh Ball, Ball was the main one Vasher. I was talking about. Right. And we surmise that with three weeks left in the season, that would be a three-week window where that he could practice with the team. Right, exactly. So my question is, how does that extend into the postseason? Or does that it? part, I don't know. So that, that's what I'm wondering is yeah. with this. If he can continue practicing. Well, yeah, and because what they've done now, with, it was Noah Brown. All right, so your three-week window, obviously that takes you to the first week of the playoffs there. I'm, yeah, so I'm wondering, do they have to then make a decision on Josh Ball um, after um, the that's, end of the regular season, whether he can still practice with the team in the postseason? Right, yeah, I don't know if you get But the, the thing you can do on that, too, you just it, the window expires and you right. can start it anew, or is he gone done? Or, or I think you, you're just done. And he, you, is he and done you, then? And you revert to injured reserve. Okay, he, he does, and he cannot, and it cannot be exercised again. Let's say the Cowboys had a need two weeks into the postseason. Right. They, he would not be an option. Then. I think, I think. Not. Okay, that's, I'm thinking that's the way that one okay. goes. So anyway, that's your update. So Malik Hooker and Tristan Hill both back in practice, uh, or at least the portion that. Uh, the uh, pool reporter was able to watch and just understand there was a pool reporter. Uh, the media is not being allowed into the building uh, and various protocols going on that came out uh, yesterday. And uh, NFL sent out a notice that uh, for those media members that want to cover playoff games, they have to have proof, proof of their booster shot. By January twelfth, which is the Wednesday prior the to the, the, round. the wild card games yeah. in the uh, postseason, as it stands uh, right now, and I would assume it's going to continue into the postseason. Uh, and the reason there is a pool reporter is across the league, uh, the NFL is not allowing reporters basically into the facilities, right. uh, unless you work for the team. <laughs> um, and even if you work for the you, team, you, some you folks don't have are... access. Yeah, and you don't have access. Uh, unless you're a pool reporter, uh, to the practice. So, so. everybody understands Mike McCarthy's um, daily interview is now a WebEx interview. Uh, and at least they've got him on camera, and it kind of looks like he's talking to us. And right. He can see us, too. So that helps out. And the same thing's going to happen with the players um, and they're doing those right now. And those are going on right now. Yes. Yep. So anyway, that gives you an update of what uh, sort of is going on around here. And 
I would imagine we have a heck of a lot to talk about. Yes, we do. And, of course, one of those things that uh, we will talk about uh, was the news that came down last night about the loss of John Madden. And uh, we'll spend some time here uh, talking about uh, John Madden and uh, his uh, impact on Cowboys fans uh, through the years here. Uh, maybe we'll do that in our second segment. Okay. You want to do that? Yeah, that sounds and, good. Uh, we devote more time to it. Yep. And... Um, uh, of course, passed away at the age of 85, and uh, the NFL made that announcement around 6 o'clock uh, last night, uh, said he died unexpectedly uh, yesterday morning, but according he had, to the family. He had been, um, I don't know what exactly it was, but for the last three or four years, he's. Uh, I think you've probably seen him sort of disappear from um, a, a public person mm-hmm. I, I should say he wasn't doing interviews anymore um, and uh, so he had been battling something uh, for for quite some time um, but it sounds like the family didn't expect the time to come when it did yeah uh, yesterday morning which so. is and, and I know we're going to get into this but to set it up uh, he ends up passing away two days after Fox Sports 90 minute documentary that showed on Christmas Day I guess Three days, I yep. guess. I said two days, uh, and, and um, they act. And that was the first thing I've seen him do because they did a really neat thing. I, did, I haven't got you a haven't chance seen to see it, it yet. No. So for those of you who have not seen it, watch it. It 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 is really riveting, really well done. One of the best I think I've seen in in quite some time. But one of the uh, elements they used was. They allowed John to sit in front of a big screen and watch it. So he got to see oh, that's cool. the and you got to see his reaction to some of the things they had on the and that's how they used him in the in the video. You know, they had old uh, interviews, old uh, video stuff like that. But that's how they basically used him in the documentary. Of him watching what other people were saying about him, and he did make a few comments. Yeah. All I'm telling you is, you got to watch it. It was uh, John Madden. This is your life. Yes, basically. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. So we'll, we'll talk more about uh, Madden coming up here in the next segment. Uh, you know, I, as I like to do. Uh, I like to go behind enemy lines and listen to uh, talk radio in the opposing city each week. I've uh, tuned in a little bit to Phoenix uh, Radio in the last uh, couple of days, and that is a team, the Arizona Cardinals, that is reeling right now. As everyone knows, they've lost three in a row. They're three and five since starting the season uh, seven and zero. Oh. Uh, it's going to be a motivated team coming yes. in here on uh, Sunday to play the Cowboys because they've wrapped up a playoff spot. They do want to win their division, obviously. And they've got this game, and then they close against Seattle, and they got the Rams that are the division leaders right now. But more than anything, they need to get to playing football better again. And so that's that's their main motivation coming in here. And by the way, uh, this will be of interest to you. Uh, they're going to go behind enemy lines because our – Former teammate, and I was wondering, sat in with us many times on mix shots. Danny Sarek uh, is now uh, working uh, for the Arizona Cardinals, kind of running their uh, production department, the video, TV she stuff. She went there mid-season. Yeah, about the time early, that, early. Uh, it was. I thought it was about the time they were seven and zero. Oh. I was going to blame Danny for no, their no, three no, and no. five. No, 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 no. I think she started. I think she started almost it was like, right at the beginning okay. of the season. All right, so we'll give her credit anyway, for the she's, seven and zero oh start. We're gonna too. we're gonna do a little Zoom things, and she's gonna interview me. How about All right. that? All right. So, uh, and she's doing well and loves it. So good for her. And of course, uh, she's from right here in yes. Dallas, and so I bet she can't wait to come back here. And another this. great University of Missouri grad. That, that's exactly right. That's right. Uh, and, of course, Kyler Murray. Um, you know, you look at the Cardinals, and we'll get into more of them in the next couple of days, uh, but you look at where their season kind of went sideways here in the last uh, couple of months. He got hurt, missed three games. Colt McCoy came in for him and actually was 2-1 and one as the starting right. quarterback. 
And so it's kind of been since then. It's you know they lost DeAndre Hopkins to an injury, and um, and so things have gone haywire for them. But when we look back to last year. I think Kyler Murray continued his streak of being undefeated at AT AT&T Stadium. Yep. And here he comes again. Yep. So it's, well, it'll be even a newer year come uh, Sunday. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so it, it's uh, time for the Cowboys to do to break that uh, streak that he started, not only at Allen High School, but at Oklahoma and then with the Cardinals. You know, he didn't play all that well against himself, against the Cowboys right. last year. He was... Uh, uh, errant with some passes early, but he hit a big bomb to Christian Kirk, and um, you know that got the Cardinals going in that game, and, and the Cardinals had their way with the Cowboys. But that was a totally different Cowboys team, of course. Yeah, and a totally different defense too. Exactly. By the way, and uh, and Dan Quinn's done a, a wonderful job. And by the way, we probably I don't know if we had a chance to mention that yesterday that uh, Jacksonville had uh, contacted the Cowboys for permission uh, to interview. Uh, Dan Quinn and Kellen Moore for their vacant we did uh, talk about that. coaching job. I, I think what we didn't talk about was all the other guys that they are either have interviewed or will interview. Uh, they're interviewing uh, six coordinators, so I gave you two, and then Tampa Bay's offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich, who played for uh, Jacksonville, uh, also. Tampa Bay's defensive coordinator Todd Bowles again shows you when you win a Super Bowl, everybody's trying to poach guys that help you win that Super Bowl. Uh, also, former Cowboys linebacker coach, now the Colts defensive coordinator Matt Eberflus, and also Nathaniel Hackett, the P- Packers offensive coordinator Paul Hackett's son, former Cowboy uh, assistant co- offensive coordinator. Uh, he will be interviewing, and then it's also been reported that uh, they have shown interest in Doug Peterson and Lions former head coach Jim Caldwell. And I understand, I I think I saw on Twitter just uh, here within the last hour that they are interviewing Peterson tomorrow. Tomorrow? He, that's when his – have you heard anything about the timeline on when they might interview um, more or so, when? And any clarification on does that need to happen prior to the end of the regular – it does that need to happen prior to the end of the regular it season, It can right? happen, yes. Or it just can. It, it opened yesterday to – at grant permission and just listening to uh, McCarthy, I, I got the idea that you know Friday, Saturday, once basically as they say in the business, the haze in the barn, that they would have time to be able to do that uh, and and still take care of whatever business they have with the Cowboys. But if I'm looking at all those candidates, I don't know Byron Leftwich's name kind That's of what sticks out all to along. me. Yeah. Played there, people know him. It's done a really good job uh, in Tampa Bay. Although I don't know that he could bring Tom <laughs> Brady with him, but he's got a young quarterback that you know you can work with, and you bring in a good, another good quarterback coach, and you got an offensive coordinator who played in the league. Uh, certainly would help him out, and they should have a whole lot of draft. Uh, talent um, capital uh, capital that's what I was looking for uh, and I would imagine still have a bunch of uh, free agency capital too to spend they always seem to have a lot of money so um, it you know it's not a bad situation when you think you have your franchise quarterback and uh, there's an Ian Rappaport report uh, let's see uh, that I'm just getting this from Chris Beam. It sounds sounds like Quinn will interview after the regular season. Yeah, oh, he turned after, down during yeah. the season. He not, says he not does not during, want to interview in these two weeks. He says he'll do it after the season is over. And he had a pretty, does that mean after the season's over or after the regular season's over? I bet it after the regular season is over. Okay. Not during the, it during the bye week. The bye week. Yeah, probably. Oh, oh, very good. Bill. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's yeah. that's when I would do okay, it, during okay. the bye week. Yeah. Yeah. All right, when we come back here on Mixed Shots, uh, let's remember John Madden. 
Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want great, fresh tasting, ready to serve guacamole for your home gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. Brace yourself for an existential question. Has your butt been having enough fun lately? Have you been treating it well? Has it been going places? If not, then it's about time you start using SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to get your butt tickets to live events. Just ask the thousands of other butts who have rated it the number one ticketing app. So what are you waiting for? Download the app now or visit SeatGeek.com to get tickets to sports, concerts, and live events and make your butt happy. SeatGeek, get your seat in a seat. How great would it be to travel to watch the Cowboys win on another team's turf? Pretty great. But honestly, just watching the game from anywhere but your house would be fun. Even a hotel bar with some guy named Phil from St. Louis who thinks Oakland still has a team. So whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Back back, to mixed shots. Be the first to receive new offers, event info, and more when you sign up to receive text messages from the team. Text COWBOYS to NFLDAL. That's 635-325 to receive 10% off your next Pro Shop order. Message frequency may vary. Message and data rates may apply. All right, very good. Uh, and uh, to clarify on the Dan Quinn uh, talk that we were, uh, and and the possibility that he uh, would interview with Jacksonville, they've requested permission, and he has indicated, according to reports, uh, that he will not interview with them uh, until the season is over, and and that means the season is over, not the regular season is over. It is a two week window uh, that leads that gives teams that have a head coach vacancy. Uh, here, uh, but prior to the start of the playoffs, opportunity to talk with an assistant coach with other teams with permission. So, so the other thing to point out is just because you're getting uh, interviewed doesn't mean you know you're dead set on getting the job. I can remember when Sean Payton was interviewed by Al Davis for the Raiders' a head coaching job uh, when he was with the Cowboys, and that would have been 2005, I believe. And I think he just had a few misgivings of taking over the Raiders at that time, not knowing who the quarterback was going to be. And I remember he turned the job down, and somebody in the national media said he just committed professional suicide because mm-hmm. if you turn down Al Davis, you know, who, who else is going to come after you? Well, the next year the Saints came knocking at the door. And how did that turn out? Mm, he's still there, I think. Yes, I think so. <laughs> and, uh, and then Mike Zimmer had an opportunity to become the head coach at the University of Nebraska and went through the interview practice and uh, process. process. And he's, he ended up turning that down and ended up becoming defensive coordinator and then a head coach. So. And you know what? And, and and sometimes you know, from from Zim's standpoint, he just didn't want to go back and recruit. You know, mm-hmm. go on the road and deal with eighteen year old kids. And um, you know, it's one thing to recruit free agents. That does not seem like something that he would enjoy no, doing, right? Because it was he was at Washington State in 19, 1994, 95 is when he came here. Zim was he at Washington State or Weber State? We, uh, we, uh, he was at Weber for sure with Dave okay. Campo, and that's okay. how Campo okay. got him. Got I think him I here. thought he was at Washington he State. He might have been at Washington State. Just prior to coming yeah. here. But it was 94 season, 95? I believe 94, 95, yeah. because he came as a, a, a defensive uh, assistant. And then he became the secondary coach after Campo 
was named the defensive coordinator after Butch Davis. So he was in his left. 30s then. And yeah. It's a lot, a little different uh, recruiting college kids when you're 32 instead of 62. So interesting uh, note on Zim as we're uh, getting off track here, but he was a grad assistant at the University of Missouri when I was there covering the team for the uh, Columbia Tribune. Uh, he's older than I and, had him then. <laughs> and, I, and I got to and I got to know him uh, then. And when he showed up here, he looked and I looked and I'm go, no kidding, you're the guy. <laughs> the young guy that you know was basically sort of my age at that time. He would still be sort of your age, and he though. probably still is. <laughs> at that time, he was. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk uh, John Madden. There's yes. so much that I mean, you could, uh, as we talked about with the uh, documentary on him. Uh, there's uh, there's not enough time in the day to talk about. All the uh, John Madden stories, but uh, let's uh, you know, especially his impact as far as Cowboys fans are concerned. Uh, you know, you look back at uh, his career, and he, uh, what people may not realize, that, uh, at such a young age, he became the head coach of the Oakland Raiders, and uh, ten years as a head coach uh, throughout the decade of the '70s until '78, '79, and retired at age 42. Went right into the broadcast booth and uh, the the legend continued from there yeah um, and I was fortunate to have a couple brushes with him um, it, the ones that uh, stick out uh, I, I was at uh, the 2006 uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame induction covering basically Troy Aikman that's the year uh, he was in, uh, inducted and that was the year John went in. And I think everybody remembers uh, his speech, uh, his induction speech. Uh, and the thing that always hit me and still does every time I walk into the Hall of Fame rotunda where the busts are is he basically says, I'm convinced that when the lights go off in the, in the building and everybody leaves the Hall of Fame, that the busts the busts talk to each other, mm-hmm. and it, it just I don't know, but when I walk in there, I could visualize what he was thinking, right? And I I just thought that was just a wonderful thing way to put things, right? Um, and then that um, the 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 year before 2005, when the Cowboys played back to back games at San Francisco and Oakland, and Bill kept the Cowboys team there, didn't want to travel back and forth, so we stayed uh, in San Francisco, Oakland area. Uh, John Madden had Rich Dalrymple, the Cowboys executive vice president of public relations, put together a group, and we got bused to his town where he was living, Pleasanton, Pleasanton. California, and he treated us to dinner at his favorite steakhouse. Mm. And it was like, are you kidding me? We're, we're doing this with John Madden. Uh, and then the, the last thing from a personal standpoint, um, and, you know, when you do – you've been in the business as long as we have. You've met people. You don't get starstruck. Uh, I think it's only happened to me – I think I told you this story twice, maybe – uh, the 50th anniversary of the MLB All-Star Game was at Comiskey Park. And, you know, my guy growing up as a White Sox fan was Louis Aparicio. Mm. And they had the old-timers game and interviews in the locker room or the whatever they call it. the Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Uh, and I just couldn't bring myself to ask him a question. <laughs> I was just like, no, this isn't right, right? When I was 10 years old, I wanted to be Louis Aparicio, right? We were about the same size, too. Uh, and then uh, that time in 2006 at the Super Bowl, uh, when I interviewed Bart Starr, uh, who I idolized growing up a Packers fan, uh, and that was when Troy, they were – we were asking questions about if Troy deserved to be in, right? And that's when he poked me in the chest when he answered my question. Uh, I'm going, Bart Starr's hit me in the chest, right? <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, when the Cowboys got good, it was Summerall and Madden doing mm-hmm. the games, right? And they were always at the ranch, uh, always around in the press box. And I don't know how it happened, but I remember passing him, and he said, Hi, Mickey. Wow. Yeah. And I said, he knows who I am? <laughs> and it's like, oh, my God. And I thought that was like the, 
the coolest thing ever that John Madden knew who I was just from covering the Cowboys being well, around, right? He got on DallasCowboys.com. <laughs> this might have been before DallasCowboys.com, too. I can't remember exactly the timing of it, but— Well, you uh, got the clips. Yeah, he was he doing the, research, yeah, right? that's right. They, those guys— do, do the research. Mm-hmm. They know. As a matter of fact, that time I think I told you uh, the, when the Cowboys were playing the, the Eagles, and this was just a couple years ago, and one of their former players was doing radio for him. He was the analyst on radio and ended up in the elevator at AT&T Stadium with him going up to the press box before the game. And uh, and I knew who he was, and I said something to him, and he goes, oh, yeah, he goes, Listen to talking cowboys all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So he was doing his research, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, f- figuring out if he can find stuff out, probably for the head coach. Too. Yeah. So I don't know, uh, you know, your memories of Madden. And, you know, I uh, and for us, you just need to understand we remember him as the head coach, right? We remember him as the TV guy, not Madden, and that's why the I video thought, game. Yeah, I, I, that's why I thought it was cool. The, they named the documentary All Madden. Mm-hmm. It was pretty neat. Yep, and. Um, you know, as you alluded to earlier, uh, he here in the, his latter years had a reclusive uh, lifestyle. He wasn't in the limelight out in public much at all. I don't know if this this may have been close to one of his last public appearances. Uh, was at Pat Summerall's memorial service. Uh, Pat passed away. Of course, Pat lived here in Dallas in South Lake. And he passed away April 2013, so that's uh, now been more than eight years ago. It's been that it's long. That long, yep. And, um, and, and John Madden delivered uh, the eulogy at uh, Prestonwood Baptist Church here, and I was, I was here at the memorial service. It is a moving tribute. You can, I, I'm gonna, I'll find it and tweet it out, uh, the link on YouTube. Uh, he talked about 15 minutes about uh, Pat. But um, it was really great, and um, just uh, telling stories and, and stuff, and, and, and how much Pat, how close they were, how, how you know they worked together for 22 years, and but beyond that, they were they were close friends. You know, there are some people you worked with them for 22 years, and and you know you just uh, you're not necessarily close friends, but they were. And uh, you know, I had the opportunity. It was the last eight years of Pat's life, um, Pat was in a Bible study that I'm uh, in, um, and it's still going now eight years later. Pat was always the first one there, uh, apparently. I wasn't always the first. I was usually the last one there. <laughs> but I'm told that you know Pat would, would get there first, and he would tell stories. One of the stories that he loved to tell about John Madden was um, – Thanksgiving, whenever the first CBS and then Fox teams uh, were here doing a Thanksgiving game, Pat would have the whole broadcast crew at his house in South Lake for a dinner on Wednesday night. And Pat said the only time that he ever saw John Madden speechless <laughs> was the time it was a Wednesday before the Thanksgiving game, and uh, they were about to have dinner with the whole broadcast team there. I mean, we're talking production crew, everybody there. So there's probably dozens of uh, people there. And <laughs> so they were about to sit down to dinner, and Pat said, you know what, it'd be nice if – John, maybe you could say grace and give thanks before <laughs> before we sit down to eat. He looked in the direction of Madden, and he said, Madden turned beet red <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> and then about that time, John Weber, the Cowboys' late uh, team chaplain, who was standing behind Madden, Started with our Father in Heaven, we want to give thanks. <laughs> Summerall was was looking in the direction of John, but it wasn't Madden; it, it was, was Weber. Weber. That and so, but he, he always he, he would always tell that story at Thanksgiving time. This time that that John Madden was speechless, he and, asked him to say grace. And, and one one of the things you also need to do is go on DallasCowboys.com, Jerry. 
Jones had a, a statement, and it, it's pretty long. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I thought this paragraph uh, really summarized uh, John Madden. He said, when he walked into the room, it was a better day. When he talked, you listened and you learned. When he laughed, everyone in the room laughed. And when he got back on the bus to leave, you always wanted more. You were always looking forward to his next visit. And I think he's He's actually uh, absolutely right, and if you and if you remember, you know he hated to fly, which was one of the mm-hmm. reasons he quit coaching. And then he gets into the TV business, and he started on the train. He was Mr. Amtrak, and that was taking too long. Uh, and the and Madden they came Cruiser up with the Madden Cruiser idea on the bus, and you know what? Because of that, we came up with that idea to do the Cowboys bus going to training camp for several years uh, to Oxnard. Also, uh, Emery, our bus driver, Emily Tyler, uh, we did the roundabout trip to San Antonio. We didn't just take the four-and-a-half-hour drive down I-35. We went through the hill country. We went down to the valley and came back up through Corpus Christi, uh, to San Antonio for training camp. But it was because of what John was doing that was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. And it was. You got to see America, and he did too. Here's another story that Pat told about him. You know uh, how they became the voices of the Madden video game. Okay, they. So when it, the, the video game first came out, they came to Pat and John and – wanted them to be the voices and then they would so they started talking compensation and so they had a choice they could pat uh, you could you can we'll pay you a fee for it or we won't pay you a fee but you get royalties right okay for the game and so pat took the fee uh, uh, no okay yeah you pay me x amount of dollars i'll do it okay madden didn't want the fee he just wanted the royalties oh my you know that town, Pleasanton, California? Right. The Madden family basically owns, owns that. All, all the real estate. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a, it's a very nice area there by Oakland there in the Bay Area. All the Madden family basically, uh, they own all that land out there. And, and <laughs> by the been, way. That's it, since been developed. In the documentary, <laughs> and this is kind of spoiler alert here, but when you were talking about Thanksgiving, obviously there was a section on the Traducan uh, uh-huh. They interviewed the guy who came up with the idea for the – or initially made them for, for John. And Nate Newton was part of it. Uh, they showed the Nate Cowboys loved eating their turkey <laughs> leg. And he he always credits John Madden for getting them in the Pro Bowl. Mm-hmm. That, you know, John was the one that kind of noted him, uh, had his name out there. And I also have, since Everson couldn't be here um, – He said that he he wanted to point this out. He said, John is mostly known to this generation through video games. To the generation before that, the premier sports TV analyst. And to the generation before that, a championship NFL coach. He was the best to do do it in everything he ventured. Mm. So uh, Everson wanted to make sure people knew that that he also – uh, had some things to say about him. And, uh, by the way, I just have a note on my phone that uh, Bill Belichick apparently spoke roughly 17 minutes on John Madden at his press conference today. Oh, so really? You might want to go. Well, he go was he that. was a big. You know what? The, it, it didn't surprise me that he was on there in the documentary. Uh, Bill Bar- Parcells was on there. Lawrence Taylor. Hmm. Lawrence Taylor had a lot to say about John Madden. It was it was riveting. Um, and uh, part of it's at times kind of a tearjerker too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it really was to hear what people had to say about him. Yep. Um, and again, I will uh, tweet out. I'll find that eulogy that he gave for uh, Pat Summerall because I, 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 you know, if I think Pat would probably say the exact same things about John Madden that you'll hear in that. You talk about yeah. tearjerkers. It's something that you got to see. All right, we will wrap up mix shots here in just a moment. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. 
Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. The Cowboys way where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like, where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day, where we are all defined by one single thing, the star, where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. Back, back, back. To mixed shots. Download the official app of the Dallas Cowboys to get access to in-market game broadcasts, mobile tickets, daily podcasts, live pregame and postgame shows, game updates, and more. Download it in the app or Google Play stores. All right, last few minutes here of uh, Mix Shots, and um, we've got an honor for a Cowboys quarterback that uh, uh, happened earlier today. Yes, and it's the second time Dak Prescott's been named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. The first time was after the New England game, and after this performance, it was probably not a hard decision. Threw for 330 yards against Washington, four touchdowns, completed 71.8% of his passes, finished with a quarterback rating of 131.4. Pretty good performance. So he basically won that uh, in one half of play. And he, because he only completed, I think, one more pass. For nine yards in the second yeah, half. Yeah, for the second half and then <laughs> retired. And we don't get to see that often with Cowboy quarterbacks, by the way, over the last several years, mm-hmm. as a matter that of fact. It just doesn't happen in the NFL. So that's five times he's won the Player of the Week award. Five total. His, yeah. Twice this year. Okay. Uh, yeah, rather amazing and kind of tells you the level that he played at. And they're hoping to continue that against uh, Arizona, uh, which, as we pointed out earlier, is probably a pretty desperate team right now coming mm-hmm. in here. Uh, although they've played desperate teams before, right? Washington needed to win, and they didn't. The Saints needed to win, and they didn't. Uh, so now here I'm thinking Arizona, Arizona might be a little better. Better team. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see what kind of effort they are able to muster on Sunday afternoon. All right, uh, Gil Brandt, uh, all rookie. All rookie defensive team, and obviously Micah Parsons on it. But he also, uh, at defensive tackle, Osa Odigizua. I like that. Yeah, and he, he just basically pointed out how well the rookie played with Neville Gallimore being out, uh, who would have started at that spot. Um, you know, Carlos Watkins missed a, a game or two uh, with COVID, as I remember. And, uh, you know, Osa probably played a heck of a lot more than he would have uh, had Neville Gallimore more been ready to st- start the season. And that's why one of the things that's going on with this defense now is they don't have to play Neville Gallimore 50 snaps a game. He can get in 30, and this guy gets 25. And uh, the rotation that Dan Quinn has going uh, is rather uh, remarkable at this time. And then you get everybody else healthy with Demarcus Lawrence coming in, Randy Gregory. We knew what he could do once he got back. Uh, yeah, that front has been pretty potent. Uh, also knowing that Dorrance Armstrong got to play a heck of a lot more than expected because of Lawrence's injury. Uh, they exposed Parsons to various positions. Um, so, yeah. 
Uh, this will be a good test, though, for the defense because Kyler Murray is one of those quarterbacks that uh, he will extend the play, uh, he will create plays, and as Bill pointed out from the game last year, he will throw one up that's a 50-50 ball, and sometimes he completes it. And that's uh, trouble for the defense. You know, uh, back on uh, Odigazua, this is now two straight years that the Cowboys in the third round have taken a defensive tackle who, uh, when you look at them where they are right now, Odigazua at the end of his rookie season, Neville Gallimore, of course, uh, uh, had to overcome the injury, but the level of play that he's at here in his second year, that they've taken a third-round pick that probably should have been a higher draft pick. Yeah. You know, if, if there was if there was an all second year team, now I understand Gallimore hasn't played enough snaps this year, played enough games to make that team, but if you just went on football playing ability, I'd I'd put Gallimore and Diggs on a second year all all second year second year sophomore all second team, year team, you know. Yeah, and, and Gallimore missed almost the entire season, right? Mm-hmm. This year. Uh, but you see how good he is. And then because of some other injuries, their other third-round pick, Chauncey Golston, uh, got an opportunity. Uh, and, you know, he's starting to play Just well at, at defensive end. Look, look at how well this team has drafted the last two years with C.D. Lamb, Trayvon Diggs, and Neville Gallimore last year in the first three rounds. And this year with Micah Parsons in, in the first round, obviously, and uh, and obviously the way Odigazua has come on. Now we'll see what happens with Kelvin Joseph. It's you know He's more of a project, but, but he got it, an opportunity the other night. It was encouraging. Yeah. And then Chauncey Golston. Right. And... Now, Sean Wright was the other third rounder, right. and he's a project. And, and yeah. he's a project, but he's been Josh active. Ball in the fourth round is right. you know we'll and who see. by the way is practicing. Mm-hmm. So he's he's on that he's the other guy that's on the twenty one day yep. IR return. Okay, uh, we're out of time uh, already. One thing uh, for tomorrow we were going to do today, but since Everson wasn't here, uh, our little. Uh, uh, Zoom interview that we did uh, that aired on CBS 11 last night. Everson talking with Trayvon Diggs. Uh, we're going to re-air that tomorrow on the show. So. And and we uh, and I turned into what um, Everson had to say uh, the other day on mix shots uh, about Diggs and his excitement for the kid uh, on DallasCowboys.com. There's a a story about what Everson had to say. In case you didn't hear it, you can read it. All right, so that does it for Mix Shots for a Wednesday, and we will talk at you again tomorrow at 1.30. Go Cowboys. All right. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!